Hey everybody, this is Greg Gossett from Gossett Trading and Mentoring Live and today is Wednesday, January 20th, 2021. We are in the uh, final hour of the trading day, my final or my favorite time of the day to make my buying and selling decisions because at the end of the day, the large financial institutions come in, they, they take control of the price movement away from the day traders and the algorithms and i believe following them at the end of the day is a long-term edge in your trading so thank you all for coming today always look forward to seeing everyone i hope you're having a good day i hope you're having a good day in the markets uh speaking of currently the dow jones is up 230 points up 0.74 percent nasdaq having a huge day up 281 points up 2.13 percent and the s p is up 54 points 55 points up 1.45 percent so wow what a day what a day what a week january has been great so far so here's the plan for today first of all we're going to run the u.s legal disclaimer secondly we're going to come back take a look at my current positions talk about when i bought them why i bought them why I bought them, how I'm going to manage them going forward. I did have a couple day trades today, one winners, one losers, uh, and I'll be sharing those with you as well. Then we're going to go over to the board. I see lots of green over there and lots of nice moves on the positions for all of you. So that'll be fun to go over and take a look at that. Uh, then I'm going to switch gears, talk about trading psychology for a few minutes. Uh, most important skill, in my opinion, is uh, the skill of being able to be disciplined and to follow your plan so hopefully by speaking about this every day hopefully one day it will really click in all right and then after that um, i have gone down through my watch list i've gone down through the results of kamal scanner i have three requirements whenever i'm looking to enter a new trade first requirement i have to have a combination or a confluence of indicators lining up on multiple time frames number two i have a half have to have a good risk to reward uh, at least two to one based upon my reward compared to my risk and number three uh, always take a few minutes whenever you're considering buying a new position think to yourself do i really need this do i already have other stocks that are in the same industry as this how correlated are they how much account heat do i have because the markets can turn on a dime everyone you know with markets going up 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 we get lulled into that kind of feeling that it always goes up but markets go up and down so please remember that okay so there are some end of day candidates that i'm going to go through before the close i'll try to narrow it down to the very very best candidate at the end of the day and if i find one that meets all my requirements i will go ahead and purchase it before the right before the close of the market after the market closes if you have any questions for me please let me know happy to answer them if you have any stock symbols that you'd like me to look at I'm happy to do that. Just go ahead, put them in the in the live stream and I'll do my best to get to them before the close of the market. And then lastly, if you have any new positions for me that you want me to tell that you want to tell me about or that you want me to put up on the board, if you could please wait till the market closes before you tell me. Uh, that way I'm done trading, teaching, pressure's off, and then we'll spend as much time as we need. Okay. So hang tight. I'm gonna run the US legal disclaimer and I'll be back in about 40 seconds. Thank you. This video or live broadcast, like all instructional materials produced by Gossett Trading and Mentoring LLC, is created and published for informational and educational purposes only. Please carefully read and or listen to the U.S. government required disclaimer before watching this video or live stream broadcast. The video link and disclaimer text are located in the description section of this video or live broadcast here and here. Thank you so much. All right, let's take a look and see who is here today. Lova74 is here. Good to see you, Lova. Hope you're doing well. Evan is here. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Evan. Steve says, I exited Facebook for a 5.23% gain. I exited Baba for a 5.6% gain. Oh, okay, interesting. So Steve exited Facebook and Baba. Okay, well, I will 
get those at the end of the day i will get those all updated very nice trade steve and good to see you my friend thank you as always for coming always appreciate it johan is here hello how you doing johan good to see you morgs is here hi greg and all hello morgs good to see you hope johan's having a good uh evening in hong kong hope morgs having a good evening in south africa kamal is here hey bud good to see you hope you're having a good day thank you as always for the results of your of the scanner jatson is here hello good afternoon sir hello jatson nice to see you love us as i went back and listened to three old podcasts starting with february 24th of last year greg did a great job of giving everyone good guidance during a scary time that was brutal <laughs> Chatton says the beast netflix is a breakaway gap i bought today at 574 this won't stop easily if sustained Okay, remind me at the end, but nice going there, Jats. And Frank says, hello, Greg and group. Hello, Frank, good to see you. Bob is here, good to see you. Bob says, hey, everyone. Steve says, I will buy the gold gap and go back over the 200 SMA if this holds. All right, let me put gold over here. <clears throat> so we make sure to look at that before the close. Yeah, I saw that gold was up over the 200 day. Man, I'm not feeling so hot today. Uh, I woke up, you can probably hear it in my voice. So take it easy on me today. I'm running on like four cylinders, <laughs> but at least it's a good day in the market. That, that, always, <clears throat> that always helps. Um, all right. Uh, Gary says, hello, Gergen Group. Hello, Gary. Good to see you, bud. All right. Well, let's get started. Facebook. All right. Glad to see we have a lot of people in this. We have Steve and Johnson and Yas and Dan and Morgs and Pat and Jatton and Quad and Tim and myself. We bought uh, Facebook when it had a nice confluence of indicators. It went under the 200, over the 200, under the negative third, over the negative third. Uh, uh, and under the 30, over the 30. We bought here at 251.61. It's up 3.61% today. Uh, so far on the trade, this is up 6.63%. I did hit three profit targets. It's only showing two, but it gapped through the first one. Um, I'm inclined to go ahead with Steve on this and get out. We're coming up to this big confluence of resistance the 50 day moving average, the 100 day moving average, the one ATR channel, and it's just been a straight up move. I think there's probably better risk to rewards to be found, uh, but that's just what I'm gonna do. Also, I did sell puts on Google, no, I'm sorry, on Facebook down to $180. That's a bullish position. Um, I sold them, I can't remember when I sold them, but I sold them way down here, but I sold near the low, so I got the most premium. Uh, has the support of the 200 day moving average and the 250 on the week. And then also on the monthly, we have the uh, support of the negative one ATR channel and the 50. So I'm going to split the difference. I'm going to hold one of my bullish positions, the one that uh, gives me a little bit more wriggle room, which is are the puts because I have so much protection now and they're doing really well. Uh, so I am going to go ahead and exit Facebook and lock in profits today. It'd be nice to hit that last profit target though, before we get out of here, but that's what I'm going to do. Really good trade spy. Um, okay. I have Yas and Johnson and Dan and Jatton in here. Of course, overnight spy trade. I buy it every day at the close. I hold it overnight. I take the overnight risk. I sell it first thing the next morning. I bought it yesterday at the close at 278.65 sold it this morning at 381 wait 378 i wish i bought it at 278 378.65 and i sold it at 381.10 so nice overnight spy trade coca-cola well it's not up much but it's up i guess i should be grateful for that i did buy that yesterday with the rejection of the 30 rsi bounce near the 200 day moving average i bought it at 48.52 it's 48.54 so it is up two pennies on the day uh, but it did hold the 30 rsi twice today and is holding the 200 so i will keep this i think it's a good risk to reward ratio it's not doing very well compared to the rest of the market uh, this sector beverage is probably out of favor at the moment but i am going to stick with this i think it's a good risk to reward ratio and a good confluence 
USO, all right. This is a longer term trade that I took on USO. You know the story. I bought it here at 30.97, it's 35.80. It is up a little bit today. Uh, so far, the position is up 13.46% on the trade. I base this off of the monthly bars. That's why I said it was a long-term trade. Uh, I bought it here 30.97 two months ago. We had an under 30, over 30, under the negative third, over the negative third, uh, and a V2. So this has worked out nicely. I have not hit a profit target yet, but the profit target is so far above based upon the volatility in the move. The first profit target is 24.88% from entry, but I'm getting close. It's been a good trade. Alibaba, all right. So this is one Steve was talking about. Um, let's see. Steve and Johnson bought Ali. No, Johnson bought Alibaba at 235.20. Wow, what a great buy. Steve bought Alibaba yesterday at 250.29. Is this all that's in here? Yeah. And Steve had a over 6% move on this. Great. And he got out, locked in profits. Uh, Johnson, um, I guess close to 10. Oh, 11.86%, which is great. And then I sold puts on Alibaba, the $130 puts, paid 236 per contract. I sold them when we were down here, right? So I get more premium. And where is my, here we go, all the way down here. So I have tons and tons of protection. Those are doing really well. Almost 50% of the premium I've received in a f couple weeks, or maybe just over a week. And it's a six month, it's a six month uh, uh, option that I sold. So anyway, very nice job, Johnson. Great job, Steve. And uh, nice going on locking in profits. Okay. VIX. Boy, I'm sure glad we all got out of VIX. Half of VIX. Uh, we bought here VIX V1, false breakout, the downside. Next day had a huge day up. It did reject the 50 RSI. That's why I took half profits. That's why Quad, Pat, and Gary also took half profits. Uh, today it is down 1.86%. My stop on the remaining half that I have is gonna be halfway of this washout bar because this is why I took the trade on this V1. Right now it looks like, I mean, right now it is below halfway of that washout bar. So if it continues at the close, I will just go ahead and get out of the trade. All right, Tesla. I did have a nice intraday trade on Tesla today. Really good one, good example too. I bought this close over the 200 day moving average. I was real patient with it. I saw it coming down. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna wait till I get a nice entry. I entered here at 841.90. My, my end of day or my end of bar stop would have been a close below the 200. We had a nice big up bar. I almost took half profits here, but I decided to wait. I did take half profits at 84.60. Then when we had another big up bar here that broke out of the range, I took another half of a half at 88.49.50. Then we had a close below the previous day's low. I took another half of a half. Keep in mind, at this point, I only have an eighth left. And then here, when we lost the five EMA, I took the rest, but I'll tell you what, it's nice when you get into these 200 day moving average trades and they move your way and you start taking a little profits because then it becomes real easy. You don't have to sweat every move. So I got in at 841.90, I got out at 846.10, I got out of 848.10, out of 849.50 and 852.76. So that was a good trade. And then I know we have let me get rid of the rest here. Okay. And then Jatin uh, bought Tesla back here at 639.90. Look at this beautiful move up 1% today. Sold half a few days ago. But so far, Jatin is in, let's see, 25% on this, on his swing trade. Outstanding, Jatin. Proud of you, my friend. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, then we have Apple. 
So day trade, this was a losing trade and I was kind of mad at myself because I didn't really follow my rules and that's what I get. <laughs> we have a nice return to value here and a V1. I took it, but what's it missing? It didn't have any sideways motion. So I bought it here at 131.95 and immediately took off and I was like, oh good. And then the next bar, bam down so this was a losing trade i got in at 131.95 i got out of 131.82 not bad 13 cents but still it was just the principle that i i didn't wait i've been better off taking this v1 here after the sideways motion here and look it just whoop it just rallied but it came back down but of course you know me i would have been taking half profits here I definitely would have taken half of a half here so it would have ended up so just a good example of um, follow your rules and you know here I I kind of let them slide a little bit because you know I want sidewards motion it was a v1 it was a return to value but there was no sideways motion there okay now we have two people we have frank in at 111 and we have jatin in at 123 and it's 13207 it's up 3.31 percent today what a move wow unbelievable apple's also on my list today because it has a 520 crossover so i think that's it <clears throat> gary says feel better greg thank you dan says hi greg and fabulous group hey dan jatin says look at facebook <clears throat> broke the high support of 264 with the gap ain't stopping soon who knows we shall see like i mentioned there is a lot of resistance up in that 271 range so who knows um morgue says i sold facebook for seven percent gain today fantastic morgues good to see you ava says happy day greg and everyone hello ava nice to see you hope you're having a good day ma'am David is here. Hi, Greg and group. Hello, Dave. Good to see you, bud. Hope you are doing well. We have a poem here from Frank. So let's, let me paste this on up here. <clears throat> All right, let's take a look at this poem. Trading is a constant test. That's true. It demands you be at your very best. Taking a position is a plan expressed while risk is measured, calculated, and addressed. This is the essence of a trader's quest. Wow, they get better every single day, Frank. I don't, I don't know how it's possible, but they do. Let me make sure, show all notes. Uh-oh, what happened? Okay, hopefully that will work. Let's read it again. Trading is a constant test. It demands you be at your very best. Taking a position is a plan expressed while risk is measured, calculated, and addressed. This is the essence of a trader's quest. Man, so good. So good. Yes, let's give Frank a hand. That is excellent. Bravo. I 100% agree. Holy, holy hamburgers. As I like to say, okay. Everybody ready to get to your trades? They seem more exciting than mine, so let's get to it. Cues, huge day on the cues. Now, I think this entry is so far down here. <laughs> Frank bought the cues at 284.60. It's 322.24, up 2.47% today. We are getting near that third ATR channel and we are getting near the 70 RSI, which statistically that's where trends usually run out of gas, but who knows? Uh, in this market, Frank is up 12.18%. Congratulations, Frank. Paycom, woohoo! Kamal, intraday with Paycom yesterday, or today, excuse me, this was today. Uh, Kamal told me about this at 399 look at it it's 405 41 great entry looks like he bought that right when it triggered a v1 excellent Kamal proud of you my friend beyond meat 
Okay, so Johan bought Beyond Meat way down here at 120.50. It has been skyrocketing up, a little sideways motion. Today it's losing the 200, or might, don't know yet, but uh, um, Johan is still nicely up on the trade. Let's take a look and see. Up over 10% on the trade. That's the way it's done, Captain. Nice going. Uh, Solly, S O L Y, Ramble, great trade on Solly at $9. It's $10.13. was up bigger today. Some selling came in, came back, but Ramble is still up. This has got to be a ton, right? Over 10%. That seems like the new norm. Twitter, Yas Johan, false breakout to the downside and a V1. Really nice entry, gentlemen, at 45.90. It's 47.58. It's up 3.59%. Unbelievable. Very good. I see Paycom is making a new high on the day. So that's outstanding. CRM, Gary and Kamal and Frank took a half position yesterday at 216.80. It's 223.12. It's up 2.93% today. Congratulations, Gary, Kamal, and Frank. Very nice. H-Y-L-N. Bob bought H-L-Y-N at 1577. Moved up nicely. Is down today, but still up on the trade. Down on the day, but up on the trade. So congratulations, Bob. A-L-G-N. All right, we have to go way back for this one. Jatson bought ALGN at 441, sold half at 521.90, sold another half at 550. It is 565.92, up 1.53% and up just a ton on this trade. Let's let's see how much. 22.18% roughly. Outstanding. Pfizer. All right, Yas bought Pfizer yesterday at 36.75. It's 36.53. So down a little bit on the day, down a little bit on the trade. I've been looking to buy Pfizer if I can get a nice rejection of the 200. That would give a good, really good risk reward ratio. So I hope that one turns around for you. Lily, Yas in Lily at 166.14. Look at this huge move, everybody. Nice example of a pullback to value and a V1 trigger. Gary is also in this. He's out of three quarters. He was scaling. I don't know if Yas is scaling or not, but up 16.94%. Outstanding, gentlemen. Uh, Fastly, Johnson and Johan bought Fastly at 86.80. It's 97.89. It's up 2.74% just today. And these two guys are up 11.46% roughly. Shopify. Don't ever mess with the Kamal Shopify trade. <laughs> Kamal has done really well. A couple days ago, we bought this at 11.60. It's at 12.03.22. Up 3.56%. Not bad. Very nice. Let's see. PLTR. David bought PLTR at 24.06. Let's see, somebody else bought, okay. They are out of that trade. Um, 24.06, it's 26.18. It is down 1.65% today, but it is up on, uh, up on the trade. Net, Johan bought net at, I have here 81.30, it's 83.66. So. Up on the day, up on the trade, very nice. AMC, Bob's had a monster trade on AMC. He's, he sold two thirds of it, but he bought it way back here at 210. It's 305. And currently this trade is up 31.15% in a couple weeks, unreal. Google having a huge day. Gary likes to sell this because he sold credit spreads on Google expiring in nine days at 1640. It's 1896. So he has 250 points of protection. That one's looking pretty good, I would have to say. Teladoc. Frank, what a day on Teladoc. Frank bought way back here, everyone, at 182. 
It's 248. It's up 6.94% just today. And Frank is up on this trade 26.89%. Way to go, Frank. PSLN uh, uh, Johnson had a nice trade here, $35, returned to value V2. I think he has a quarter left, but from entry to current close, up 32.63%. ITB, Jatin. Bought ITB at 5801. It's at 6043. It's up 4.08% just today, everybody. Way to go. Um, Frank bought NIO at 4616. Gary also, oh, Gary's in from 58. Uh, that's right. That's right. So Frank, so far on this trade, bought this with this nice, nice higher low V1 up 20 just over 20 percent on the trade and then gary is just slightly underwater on the trade but probably in the money totally because he he got the um the premium to factor in there as well uh oh yeah kamal is out of uber sorry about that i was looking for uber earlier i couldn't find it on this chart <laughs> there it is zoom Johan bought Zoom at 356.90. It's 381.32. It's down 3.19% today, but he is still nicely up on the trade. PSNL. Okay, I already talked about this one. Didn't I? Yes, that's a duplicate. Whew. Fiverr. Jatson bought here at 230. He sold three quarters of his position. It's 236.86, so he's up a little bit still on the rest of his remaining position. And Frank bought INAQ at 1590 at 1743, down 2% today, but still nicely, nicely up on the trade. <clears throat> okay. Let me take a look here, see what's going on. Again, Facebook, I'm looking to enter exit Facebook today because of the big move and the resistance above. So I will be taking profits there. Spy having a huge day. Of course, I'll buy that at the close. Had the nice overnight spy trade. Hey, look what happened to Coca-Cola. It actually moved up. Good. I will be keep, keeping Coke. Oil unchanged on the day. Alibaba, um, I'm keeping... Well, I have, I've sold puts on Alibaba, so I will be keeping the puts. Congratulations, Steven Johnson, on that trade. VIX, I will be getting out of VIX with the close below the halfway of the 114.21. Tesla, that was a day trade. And then Apple. All right. Kamal says, nice hold on TDOC, Frank. Cody, oh, the infamous Cody stock is back. Let's take a look. Hmm. Well, I don't want to be one to disparage Cody because every time I don't take the trade, it goes up about 30%. But uh, it's it's okay. It's it's okay if it, if it triggers this V1. It would be better if it could get over these moving averages. A lot of weird kind of choppy, sloppy. We did make a higher high. We have came down. We came down. We have one day of... We really only have one day of sideways motion, and I'm not thrilled about buying a $6, $6 stock, but you've done well on it before, Kamal, I believe, right? Jatin said, added more Apple today. Okay, sounds good. Remind me at the end. Um, okay, so listen, before we move on to look for uh, uh, the end of day trade today, um, you know, I like to spend a few minutes talk about trader psychology. There's some really good Facebook and Twitter channels out there that I follow all the time and they always produce great content, great trading words of wisdom, great information on trading psychology. 
And I saw this today because my friend Stephen Goldstein liked it and my friend Corin Jackson liked it, but this is from Denise Scholl. And if you're not familiar with Denise Scholl, she wrote the book Market Mind Games, which is an excellent, excellent book, everybody. It's on Amazon. I believe that's where I purchased it. No, that's not true. I bought it on audiobook. I listened to it on a drive up to Idaho uh, one time. Um, and I didn't make the connection till recently that this was the person that wrote the book. So she's a great author. She's at Denise K. Scholl on uh, Twitter or just Denise Scholl, but she has great information on trader psychology. And when I read this, it really made sense. And, you know, I, I, I tell this to a lot of my students, and so that's why it kind of caught my eye, but visceral or body-based intelligence is a valid source of information. What does that mean? It's how your body reacts to things, right? Um, you know how sometimes somebody you don't like, you're around them, your body kind of reacts negatively to them, so forth. Well, in my experience, at least, I get the same reaction when I look at certain setups. Uh, you know, when I'm here, I go through it and I kind of step by step say, we have this, we have that, we have this, you know, V1, whatever, right? But because I've been trading for 25 years, when I look at a chart, it's just me, I'm not having to explain it. I just feel it or I don't. And it's the best way that I can explain it. And not, of course, not every feeling I have is correct, obviously, but more than not. So, you know, when you get a lot of experience under your belt with technical analysis, at some point, you, you won't break down exactly what, oh, it's a V1, it's a blah, blah, blah. You'll just look at it. And with enough experience, you'll just feel it. I can, you know, I feel a good chart. And then uh, that's why sometimes you ask me about charts. And I look at them like, eh, you know, doesn't mean they go down. Sometimes they go roaring up, right? But, but it's just, just the experience of looking at so many charts and kind of calibrating in your mind which ones worked and which ones didn't. You know, it's something that's kind of unspoken. You just feel it. So with, with the experience that you get, the more experience you get trading, the more you're going to have this visceral response when you look at a particular setup or a body-based intelligence. Step one is literally allowing ourselves to experience senses, feelings, and emotions without acting on them. And see, that's the whole other thing, right? That's where FOMO comes in, into play. And, um, you know, you can feel the visceral uh you, you can feel the visceral feeling of, oh man, it's going to take off without me. I have to get in. Well, that's the other side of it, right? You don't have to act on them. So I, when I read this, I looked at it in two ways. One, I feel viscerally when I like a chart. And two, if I feel FOMO or an urge to do something impulsive, you know, I can feel it, I can sense it, but I don't have to act on them. So anyway, uh, Go over and support Denise Scholl, read her book, Market Mind Games. It's really great, really gets deep into the psychology of trading of, and especially how you were raised as a child and how your parents uh, raised you and treated you has a lot to do with what kind of trader you are gonna be. So thank you very much, Denise. Good seeing you, Steve and Corin, and I hope that helped. Kamal says, nice, N-I-C-E. Yeah, I looked at this earlier. We came into the value zone, sideways motion. Only issue, only issue here though, Kamal, and you know what I'm gonna say. Um, we didn't, yesterday's bar, did not wash out the previous day's bar very much at all, just barely, right? And now here we have a gap. I'm not thrilled about gaps. It's 128,000 shares. Let's look over on the weekly. It's right up against, you know, it's very close to the third ATR channel. Not that it can't go up, it certainly can go up, but I think I would be looking for something uh, with a, a little better risk to reward and a more and a cleaner setup. but. Obviously, Kamal knows what he's doing, so if he sees something there, 
Uh, but that's just that's just my humble opinion. All right, so Paycom doing very well for Kamal, making a new high on the day. Way to go, bud. Proud of you. All right. Well, let's go to our end of day candidate, see what's going on here. Apple. Okay, Apple has a legitimate crossover. Um, let me show you this. We have time. Back test. All right. And this is from etfreplay.com. I'm using this with permission, by the way. But let's do the back test on Apple. And we're going to go day of cross. We're going to use two moving averages where you're going to use the 5 and the 20 EMA. And let's take a look at the back test on this. So the entry signal is whenever you have the 5 crossing under the 20, you go to cash. When the five closes above the 20, that is your entry signal. Well, over time, this has done pretty well. Buy and hold, 15,470% return. The 520 crossover, only 8,517%. Man, how do you even get by? But, you know, all joking aside, that's still a huge return. <clears throat> on buy and hold, the drawdown was 81.8%. On the drawdown on the uh, crossover 58.2 and you know I mentioned this yesterday in the psychology section but you know <clears throat> how many of you would have held in with an 81.8 percent drawdown it's easy to say after the fact but when you're in the thick of it boy uh, that's why I do everything I can not to maximize profits but to minimize losses so I stay in that good centered psychological zone where I follow my plan and I just don't bail. So, you know, the nice thing with these crossovers, if, if, if we look here, you'll see you can get a string of losers in a row, 4.8, 5.721. 2, but, you know, look, you're in from nine days, four days, 11 days, not a lot of days. But here, look, 146.26 in 136 days, 41% in 71 days. Look at the, look at the, the losses, Sev only seven days, four days. Anytime I look at a big one, I'm probably going to see a big winner. And that's the key with trading, staying in positive positions, right? Staying in positive positions and getting out quickly when you are wrong. So uh, the 520 does back test well on, uh, on Apple. Now, the question is, we have earnings coming up on the 26th, so, you know, if your plan of trading is to hold through earnings, you might make a lot of money, but you also might lose a lot of money. So if I do take this today, uh, I will exit it before earnings and I will take it with the 520 cross. You know, do I want to take it? We have a fractal here. Here's a high with two lower highs to the left, high with two lower highs to the right. So we do have a fractal and we do have a 520 crossover. So this is definitely a potential for me at the end of the day. Verizon. I do like Verizon. We've come down. We have moved sideways. We've tested the 200 day. One, two, three, four, five, six times we have tested the 200 day moving average and have not been able to close above it. In addition to the sideways motion and the rejection of the 200 again today, we do have a V1. Now, I talked about this a while back. And here's the low of the previous range. That is going to be resistance above. So it's something to keep in mind. Let's look at the weekly chart. Weekly is holding the negative one ATR channel. It's tested it twice now. Uh, good, certainly a good risk to reward. And I like the sideways motion and I like the V1. Uh, I'll just have to see how that ends up and closes. Lovis says on the back test, is that measuring from where the actual cross happened? Is the big green bar on Apple showing us that we're late? No, it's based upon the closing price, Lovin. So it 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 will 
it will log the trade today at the closing price, closing price because it's all based upon it closing back above. So that is totally legitimate, no doubt about it. So Verizon looks pretty good, actually. EVRG. It's okay. MACD is positive. We have a V1. We have sideways motion. We are above the 50 RSI. I don't think I'm going to take this, but um, I would only take it if it closed above the 50. If it closes below the 50 RSI, uh, then if I had bought it here, I would be selling half here. So I'm not going to enter a full position on something that normally I would be selling half on. Similar to VIX the other day when we got out of VIX, right? Same thing. It rejected the 50. That was a warning sign took profits on half the VIX, which I'm glad I did because now it's down. So it's the same concept here with EVRG. Domino's Pizza. Well, just right off the bat, everybody it has a big gap. I don't like buying gaps, especially with all this resistance above. Snap, man, I remember when Snap was just a, oh, I have here Frank half position. Maybe this is an old chart. I think it probably is. Uh, do I see anything here? No, I don't. I don't like these two big down days, especially the big down day with the volume. Um, of course, you know, when we have a big down day, if we rally back up to about that 50% mark, that's where some, you know, fib resistance is going to come in. Uh, it's gone above that 50% mark, but still within the range here. And I don't see a clear signal. CTAS, big, looks like possibly bullish engulfing bar, uh, comes from a lower low. Uh, I would much rather wait for this. It might move up higher, but I'd rather pick up a higher low V1 or V2 and not try. To, I just think it's chasey at this point. MASI, down, holding the 50 and a V2, which is good, but... This big skyscraper bar down here, this concerns me a lot. ISRG. Well, there's earnings tomorrow. So um, not interest in IRSG and, and it, it is a, V1, a V2, uh, still has some unfilled gap, but uh, especially with earnings tomorrow, I'm, I'm not interested. UGL. All right, UGL is, whoa, what happened? UGL is double leverage gold. I believe Steve is going to buy UGL, not based on the UGL chart, but based upon the gold chart, having the gap above the 200 and not giving back the gap, as Steve calls it, a gap and go. So. Uh, I imagine, actually, I have to ask Steve. Steve, is your stop going to be a close below the gap up day or is your stop going to be a uh, close below the 200? But he's going to express the trade in UGL. ARE. Strong day today for sure. Not a V1 or a V2 though. So I don't see anything there. NVIDIA. Does it have a 520 cross? 529, 19, 528. So let's test NVIDIA. NVDA. It does back test well, have to say, and it does have the cross today as well. NVDA. Look at that, 21,000, wow. And so you can clearly see 529.18, 528.82, it does have the crossover. So let me do some math. I looked at this earlier, but the crossover had not happened yet. Oh, 
Oh, Steve says NVIDIA has a 1030 EMA crossover. Oh, and I just checked the 10, the 520. Let's check over here, NVIDIA on this one. Wow, Amazon's up 150 points, wow. Yes, you're right. NVIDIA does have a, so it has a multiple confluence. It has a 520 crossover and a 1030 crossover. So NVIDIA is definitely a possibility for me. Nice we looked at in GLD, we looked at also with the gap. Kamal wants to look at DDOG, Datadog. Yeah, it's a little chasey. I think it's a little chasey. Steve says, yes, UGL stop set on a close below the low of the gap. Okay, good to know. Good distinction. Quad, good to see you, bud. Good afternoon, Greg and group. A little late to the party. Better late than never. UNG, the untradeable. Eh, I mean, it's a V1 in the value zone, but no, because there's no sideways motion. But I've given up on trading UNG. <laughs> I'm always wrong. Okay, so my three favorites today are Apple, Verizon, and NVIDIA. So let's look at these a little bit more carefully on the weekly. On the weekly, um, Apple is above the 1ATR channel. It's 67 RSI on the weekly, which is a little extended, I have to say. I think very likely we're gonna get up to about 134.12 at the minimum. That's the 1ATR channel. Um, 57 RSI on the daily. Verizon. I think it offers the best risk to reward for sure. On the weekly, we've held that the bottom of that negative one ATR channel, we have support underneath. Earnings are also coming up on that. So if I take that, that will not be a long-term hold. And then NVIDIA, I think NVIDIA's earnings are out of the way. Oh no, they're not. They're on the 11th of, of February. We're at a more reasonable RSI level. And double confirmation there. And I think a little bit better risk to reward with the 520 crossover. So I'm going to take it with the 520. But it could also be it could also be taken with the 1030. MACD went positive today. 529.06, 529.20. If we look at the week. In the value zone, I mean, from a value zone perspective, NVIDIA has more room to run. Apple has the fractal as well. That's a tough one. Let's see what the market says. 3.43% today up. NVIDIA 2.9%. So the market does like Apple a little bit better. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do my usual. 
I'm going to buy them both, but I'm going to buy a half position of each. So it's just like one, right? So I'm going to buy Apple, one half position. I'm going to buy NVIDIA, one half position instead of taking two full positions. And then uh, I like Verizon. I am going to take Verizon as well. But I am going to take a half a position of Verizon just because I'm taking the other positions. Make sense? So I am going to take three positions today, but they are going to be half positions. So it's like taking a position and a half. I will buy Apple with the 520 cross half position. Verizon, I do like this setup. It's a good risk to reward ratio. I will buy half position. And NVIDIA 520 crossover uh, may not hold. 528.97, 528.76. Let's check over here. On the 1030, 528.98, 528.96. So I may not be taking the video. I'm just going to have to wait till the end of the day to make my decision on that one. Okay, so 29.33, sorry, let me do a little cleanup over here. Okay, what does that say? Okay. All right. Five twenty nine oh five, five twenty eight seventy eight. Let's see what Apple's doing intraday here. A little bit of a pullback. Oh yeah, well, better to buy in the value zone. So I'm just gonna have to wait on that one. Boy, this is gonna be tricky at the end of the day. 529, 528.77. So again, Apple, I will take with a 520 crossover, half position. Verizon, I will take a half position with the nice rejection of the 200 and the V1. And if NVIDIA holds 528.93, 528.76, if it holds, I will take a half position there with the, with the 520 crossover. Johnson, DBX. It's a V2, but I don't like to close below the open, Johnson. See how we, it's above yesterday's close, but it's below today's open. So yes, it is a V2, but it still has a huge gap here. I don't, I don't like that. All right, so let me go over here. So Verizon making a new high on the day. Video, I'm gonna have to watch, 528.61. Oh, now it's under, 528.60, 528.66. So in that case, I will not buy it if the five crosses under, has a lower value than the 20. 
52857, 52865. We have about three minutes to go. there. All right, let me check NVIDIA again. 528.61, 528.66. So it's going to be photo finish. Five twenty-eight sixty-two, five twenty-eight sixty-seven. So now it is below. Okay, it looks like it's going to be below now. Five twenty-eight fifty-one, five twenty-eight sixty-four. Oh, it's going to be super close. It's going to be as close as they get. So I know Apple's going to hold, I think. So I'm buying a half a position of Apple. And I'm buying a half position of Verizon. Verizon. All right, let's get it together, Greg, shall we? And the video is going to be very, very close. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it or not. 52859, 52866. So currently it is below. Yeah, I think it's going to end up below. So let's see. Yep, that's all correct. Okay. I did not I did not buy Nvidia. All right, let's see where everyone, where I got filled on this. So I bought SPY at 383.89 on the overnighter, half position of Verizon at 57.33, and half position of Apple at 132.11 and I did not buy NVIDIA. 
All right, so spy. <clears throat> I bought spy at three eighty three eighty nine. Verizon, I bought at fifty seven thirty three. So down on that one a little bit. And then Apple, one half position at one thirty two eleven. Okay. And I did not buy NVIDIA. Let's see, what happened to Apple in the last few minutes? Was there selling or buying? Yeah, selling, for sure. For sure. Let's see, let's take a look at the SPY. Was there selling or buying? Selling. No doubt about it. All right, so listen, if you have some new additions for me, this is the time. Go ahead, put them in the live stream. Uh, in the chat there and I will get them updated. Just want to remind everybody that I do teach private lessons in the evening time via Skype. I teach a 15 hour course, five sessions, three hours a piece. Uh, I teach you everything that I've learned over the last 25 years as a full-time trader, all the different strategies I have, all the different setups. And um, uh, I know you're going to be a better trader when you're if if you take the course. I mean, I'm just certain of that. I just know that. I've seen it with with a lot of my with a lot of my students. So, if you're thinking about it, this would be the best time. I am increasing the price from a thousand dollars to seventeen hundred and fifty on February sixteenth, which is my birthday. Uh, just because I. I'm getting too many clients, <laughs> which is fine, but you know, there's only one of me um, and only a certain amount of days or hours and days in the week. So uh, that's why I'm increasing. I hope you understand. But if you do book, book it before February 16th, I will honor uh, the thousand dollar price. So, you know, if you're interested, reach out to me, you can send me an email. Uh, uh, my email is in the description of the video. You can also send me a message on Twitter. And if you do reach out, I'll reply and say, hey, thanks for saying hi. Let's set up a Skype call. I want to know about you and your trading, your challenges, your goals. And then it's a good time for you to ask me about um, any questions you have about the course. And then when we're done with the call, you can think about it. And, uh, you know, if you're interested and want to go forward, you can just email me back and we'll get it scheduled. And then lastly, if you like today's podcast, I would appreciate it. I great, would greatly appreciate it. If you could hit the thumbs up button, if you liked it, if you found something useful, it helps the channel, keeps the channel around, helps the channel grow, and lets YouTube know there's something of value here. All right, so let's go over and see. Let's see. Okay, let's start with UGL, which is Steve. UGL. Steve bought UGL at 65.52. Sixty-five, fifty-two, and I'm just going to put here, Steve, if I can spell Steve, based on GLD gap and go over 200. Okay, so that's good. K. 
Okay, so we're going to put NVIDIA and Steve bought NVIDIA at Five thirty six ninety five. Five thirty six ninety five. And that's going to be, is that right? Let's see. Five thirty six. Yep. Yeah. And we're going to put here Steve ten thirty. <clears throat> EMA cross. Steve says spy and queues pushing into the 66, 68 RSI overbought area at all time highs. Looks chasey here. I agree. Frank says I will take DDOG for a walk, but it does have a nasty bite. So it will be a half position in 104.13 with the leash. Sounds good. I know you like that stock. I think you've traded it several times, Frank. It's funny, from my perspective, uh, you know, I can I can almost a lot of the times kind of guess who was going to be buying what, right? Because we talk every day and I just kind of calibrate it in. So very good. And let's put here Frank. one half position. Good luck on that, Frank. Johnson, is AKAM candidate to short inverse V1? AKAM. Well, I could definitely see making a case for shorting this, um, you know, in my opinion, it's much better to short lower highs than it is higher highs. Uh, you know, if we were to come back down, because yes, I mean, this is a bearish bar. It's a V1 to the downside, probably rejected the 70 RSI, I would imagine. Let's measure. Yep. So yeah, there's there's definitely some things here, but I, I don't like to short higher highs. I would much rather see this come down. See, more than likely it's gonna come down, but I don't think it will be very long lived because people that shorted up here will be buying when it gets down here, that will cause buying pressure, that will move it up. People that miss this move are gonna be looking to buy the dip. That will cause it buying pressure to go back up. That's what happens. But if you short a lower high, if we get up here and then we have a turn down, then that just means it wasn't strong enough to get back up there. The people that bought here, if it turns down, they'll bail. So, and then you'll have shorters that will come in at the higher level. That will cause two, uh, two groups of sellers. And that's when you can usually get a big down move. Usually a big up move like this, maybe you have one more down day, but usually buyers. So I would suggest if you really wanted to short this, if it comes down, then moves back up and then you get a lower high V1 or V2. You know, I'm always talking about higher low V1s, V2s to buy. It's the same concept with shorting, but instead of higher lows, you want to short lower highs. So yes, this is bearish, but I would, I, I would be surprised if it just goes straight down. I think you're going to get a bounce first because of what I just said. Quad says, Hey Greg, sold Facebook with it's good enough method entered in PM yesterday and entered VZ, VZ with you today. Okay. All right. So yeah, I am out of Facebook, except for my uh, puts that I still own. And so let's see, this is Quad. Great trade, Quad. Great trade, everybody on here. Congratulations, Steve and Johnson, everyone. Dan, Morgs, Pat, Jatton, Yas. Who do we have down here at the bottom? Tim, way to go, Tim, if you're listening. All right, so I took quad off there. 
Oh, you entered Philip Morris yesterday. I think Philip Morris was down today, right? Eighty-one, eighty-three. Oh, you're all right. Eighty-one, eighty-three for quad on that V two. and entered Verizon with you today at 57.20. All right. And again, my Apple and my um, Verizon trades were half positions. So it was like taking one full position, right? Check out Joe. Hey, William and William Ninen. Uh, Joe, let's take a look. Oh, that's nice. Nice, a little chasey for me though, Joe. Um, you know, as a general rule, I like to buy here between this green line and this green line. I like to buy here in the value zone. And then as it moves up, I like to sell it because anything above the green line, I consider it overvalued. So I want to buy in value, sell when it goes above value. I don't want to buy above value and get stopped out back when it comes to value. Okay, nice trade, Jatin. Sold one half. I think that was a prudent move, my friend. Netflix was up how much? Holy smokes. <laughs> 574 is where Jatin bought Netflix. Already nicely in the money. Okay, you added some Apple. Okay, I've already got you. I've already got you in Apple, so we'll just leave it there. Dan, Facebook yesterday took 4% 4, 4 on part today, closed with 7% on rest. Out of Facebook. Okay. Dan, nice. I am now out of Facebook also. So I guess I better move Facebook over here. So I've got you out there. Gary is in Verizon. Did you make a new high today, Gary? I bet you did. Congratulations. In Apple. Oh, that's right. You bought CRM. Oh, here it is. Sold one third. Ten four. Johan is be out of Beyond Meat. 
Nice trade, Johan. Close below the 200. I don't blame you. I was looking to trade Beyond Meat today because it was holding that 200 for a day trade, but I never got a signal. Quad says thumbs up as always. Thank you, Quad. Johnson says out of PSNL. Okay. AKAM. All right. So you've come over to the short side, have you? Small position. All right. Maybe you get some follow through tomorrow. That'd be good. But my guess is that we come back into the value zone. If it keeps going down, we bounce somewhere here. I bet it has a hard time going below there. So just my two cents worth. Right. Dave says, I asked about shop. It was five minutes to close, so you were busy, but I would like to hear your thoughts. Okay, sorry, I didn't see that. Well, I mean, honestly, I, I don't see anything that jumps out at me, really. I mean, there's there's not a V1, there's not a V2, there's not a new crossover. Um, we were off the high today. You know, Kamal bought it here because of the better risk to reward ratio. But what I would I be buying it up here? I I wouldn't. I don't. I I just don't see an entry, and whatever and. You know, whatever entry you buy here, obviously the risk to reward is not going to be as good as Kamal's when it was down here. So that's my that's my humble opinion on that, Dave. William says, hi, thanks. Flag. Is this a flag? Is what a flag, William? Yas is in Verizon. So tomorrow, the owners of uh, Keeley are coming to get her. I'm very sad. I'm very sad. I think I'm going to be able to babysit her again. But, oh my gosh, I have gotten to love this dog so much over the last month or maybe even five weeks. I mean, we are just thick as thieves. Like, she's with me all day long. We go on our little walk. She goes to bed she lays down on her little bed in my bedroom i mean she's just she has the friendliest little uh tail wag oh man you know after i lost katie it took me a minute to get used to not having a dog in the house and and uh it's gonna take me a minute to not have her in the house tomorrow Ugh, man Ugh. don't like that feeling jatson says just a little off topic which movie do you like sir related to the markets mine is the big short i've watched it a hundred times and understand how markets kill your ego and greed continues yeah i love that short i uh, that short i love that movie i just recently watched it uh another good movie um that really gets into the psyche of a trader and what can go wrong is rogue trader with ewan mcgregor I think that's a great movie. It's based upon a real story. He hid all these losses from his bank. Uh, so I don't know if you've watched that, Jatton, Rogue Trader, uh, but it's really good. And I also like The Wolf of Wall Street too, but that one, um, that one was more entertainment than understanding markets. But I think Rogue Trader kind of highlights the, the the psychological issues people go through with trading. And of course the big short was good because it was kind of a macro um, overview of the economy. And I liked how they went down to Florida and I liked how they knocked on doors to really see what was happening. I think that was great. 
All right, let's see what's happening in after hours. Apple is up 14 cents. Alibaba down 43 cents. Dow Jones is down 13 cents. Facebook up 27 cents. The Russell's down. Coca-Cola is up two cents. Way to go, Coke. Q's up 33 cents. Spy up 10 cents. VIX up to, oh, by the way, I did get out of VIX too. Yep, yeah, so I am out of VIX. So we've got Apple, we've got Coke, Overnight Spy, Oil, and Verizon. Then, of course, I have my Baba put. Jackson says, I'll watch this weekend. Wolf was pure entertainment, but yeah, thanks for the recommendation. Enjoy your day, sir. Thank you. Yeah, Rogue Trader with you and McGregor. I'm sure a lot of you out there have seen it, but uh, I really like that movie a lot. And, and it was a true story. All right, so let me take ETF back over here like so. Wow, it's been a great, great, great month so far. I'm very happy with it. Day trading has been really good. Happy with that. And from the look of things, from looking at your positions and how they're doing, looks like everyone's doing pretty well out there as well, which is fantastic to see. Johnson says, thanks, Greg, for your thoughts on AKAM. Yes, this would be my first short trade. Also, with your inputs, I agree. Down Downtrend would not be a long one. I will look to close with one profit target. Yeah, that's the way. If you short those higher highs, usually you have buyers that miss the first move up. They will come in to buy that first move down. And shorts that did short the top will be buying there to cover. So you're, you're up against two different groups of buyers. But... You know, if it makes a lower high, just always, always when you short something, a lower high is better because then you're probably not going to have buyers waiting because the lower high has already taken place and therefore it can trend further down. But we'll see tomorrow, Johnson, how that works. Love us. Thank you for everything, Greg. You are welcome. You are welcome. So, all right. Well, listen, have a good rest of your day. Gary says, feel better, Greg. See you tomorrow. Yeah. I think I'm going to go to bed. You probably hear it in my voice, but um, hey, when the market's up, it always makes you feel better, even if you don't feel so good, right? Um, but have a good rest of your day. Uh, as always, go out and do something nice for a human being today. Go out and do something nice for an animal today. It'll make both the human and the animal feel better, and I promise you it will make you feel better as well because, you know, serving others, helping other creatures – is good for you. I promise you. All right. So uh, have a good rest of your day. Be good. Be safe. Congratulations on the nice trades. And we'll see you tomorrow's Thursday, right? Uh, hopefully we'll see you tomorrow, Thursday during the last hour of the market. Take care again and take care. And uh, thanks again for coming, everyone. Bye-bye. U.S. government required disclaimer. Stock, options, futures, and forex trading is not appropriate for everyone. While there is a potential for large rewards, there is also a substantial risk of loss associated with trading. The material in this video or live broadcast is not geared towards any particular individual or to any particular financial situation and is not intended to meet the particular investment objectives of any viewer. 
This video or live broadcast, like all instructional materials produced by Gossett Trading and Mentoring LLC, is created and published for informational and educational purposes only. Any and all information contained in, implied, or referenced by this video or live broadcast is not to be construed as investment advice and no representation is made that any individual or entity involved in production of this video or live broadcast is an investment or financial advisor or is registered or authorized to give any financial advice. We are publishers and educators only. Therefore, the various producers of this video or live broadcast will not accept liability for any loss or damage of any kind which may arise either directly or indirectly out of the use of any of this material, including any loss of profit. No representation is made that any account or investment will or is likely to achieve the profit or losses demonstrated. We recommend consultation with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision. This video or live broadcast is not to be construed as an offer to buy or sell any security, financial instrument, or financial product of any kind. Notice is hereby given that any individual or entity involved in production of this video or live broadcast or their clients may have an interest in any security, financial instrument, or financial product mentioned or referenced. Any simulated or hypothetical performance Result depicted does not represent actual trading and therefore may under or overcompensate for the impact of various market factors such as lack of liquidity. Thank you.